Oh, the season is over for many, but... Uh, <laughs> for many? Yeah, for many. For it's, all. It's week 17. There's week 17. Right? Ah, yeah. Those you week can't 17. forget about those. Now, Champ, I mean Mike, I mean yes, Champ. Yes, uh, yes. We need to properly bling out, and uh, there is one way to do that. And that's, there is only one way to do that. Uh, fantasychamps.com. Mm -hmm. Go there. Mm -hmm. Buy a trophy or a belt. Brag year-round, and... Fancy Champs will give you a free ring, which you can also wear year round, and and you can wear it for League of Record. I, can I wear highly it for recommend wearing it. Dynasty, Jason can wear it for Dino Junior, and um, we will. So oh, you're done right. I'm gonna bling bling my opponent's faces out. <laughs> what? <laughs> which is a very common expression. FantasyChamps.com promo code free ring. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Tuesday, December 29th. I love how well rehearsed and thought out our pre. Our advertisements. Yeah, our ad was. What people don't realize is that was 15 takes. 15 takes to get to that level. But we got to glory. You yeah. know, we got to the yeah. gold standard. <laughs> I'm just remembering TJIF from yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Jason, it's Friday. <laughs> uh, that's what it was. Yeah. yeah. Welcome into the show. <laughs> so very excited to be with you again. Um, unbelievable timing. I just received a text message from my nine-year-old son. Oh. And uh, it's perfect. It's perfect. It says, uh, the Tom Brady pick was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> what an idiot. <laughs> and three uh, laughing faces at me. So my own son, who is uh, co-managing that <laughs> league I won with Tom Brady, has decided to time up trolling me with the show's beginning. Um, yeah, I mean, that's the truth. I'm an idiot. Yeah, I mean, dummy, dum dum over here only got <laughs> only got forty points from Brady and a half when he could have had forty five points from Josh Allen in three quarters. What? You like two quarterbacks that got benched. Yeah, I was going to say, what are the odds that the two quarterbacks would end up the one and two on the week and both not finish the game and Brady only play a half? I mean, come on, points per well, minute here, Brady was the winner. To be fair to, to Josh Allen, he pretty much did that in a half as well. His first quarter production was nil. Oh, you're saying second and third quarter. Yeah, he, he right. did his production in two quarters as well. Yes, yes. There was I, one thing I did. No, I'm going to go with I wanted that to happen because I know a lot of people <laughs> had Josh Allen and they played Josh Allen and a lot of people had Stephon Diggs. I mean, this was not – there was a chance that last night's game was just going to be kind of uh, not exciting, not an influence on whether people won or lost the championship. Uh, historically, the Patriots had been able to stop Buffalo, and so I, you know, I didn't think the odds were – supremely high that Buffalo would go mop the floor with them the way that they did. Cam Newton's career is, is done. It's done. Uh, Cole Beasley was a disappointment for people who played him in that game with all the points being scored. I mean, it was, it was all Stephon Diggs he, and, he and was, Lee Smith. Uh, I mean, genuinely, uh, Stephon Diggs was as selfish a player as I can remember. He was so... Me, me, I'm going to catch oh, another <laughs> Look, touchdown. I'm wide open. Yeah, it was really rude of him to always be wide open. What does he think? He's Devontae Adams? I don't think Josh Allen is the NFL MVP. I don't think he'll win it, but he's close. Like, who would you – I'd put Rodgers and Mahomes ahead of him. Yeah. But I that's it. I think it's Rodgers right now. Yeah. it's It's been an incredible year for Buffalo, and they are set up. Did you for see? A while. Did you catch the uh, the the handshake? I I only saw it on on socials afterwards. But Bill, we all know Bill Belichick, uh, and Uncle Bill, curmudgeon -y as they get. Yeah, mm -hmm. I did not, es especially see. for post game handshakes. It's always just like, 
He like he, what was that again? He turns into the Danny DeVito as the <laughs> penguin from from Batman Returns. Uh, but he this was like an embrace, really, at the middle of the field. Yeah, he gave McDermott a big hug. Clearly, he was pouring adorations. Uh, 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 Bill Belichick was pouring them onto head coach Sean McDermott. It was like. Holy crap, Bill Belichick is actually impressed. Did he pass him an actual torch? <laughs> I don't know. Did you guys see any of uh, Bill Belichick's press conference? No. That part I didn't know. Well, I bet he was right back to Let's Bang. Let's just say his happiness meter had run out. <laughs> he was a delight of, I mean, the questions that were asked, he got about five word answers back after a two minute long question. Oh, man. And he. He stared these reporters down. If I was a reporter in that room asking a question, I, my question would be, okay, Jason, it's your turn to ask. I'd say, I'm, I'm sorry. I've got to go. <laughs> you just kind of trail off. Is your, now, Bill, are you going to play the court? Yeah, I'm out of here. I pooped my pants. <laughs> I, I, I'll relate it back to the Patriots, back to like dynasty fantasy football. Because – if you listen to Bra uh, Belichick at the beginning of the year, he talked about, like, look, we had a million dollars to give Cam. Like, we didn't have any money. And he also said, he goes, we we sold out the last five years. We won three championships. We we lost in another one in the Super Bowl, and we and we lost in an a AFC title game. They they also had more COVID opt-outs, like important COVID opt-outs, I think, than anybody else. Yeah, so it was, you know, this is what you do. Sometimes you sell out for a title, and it feels great when you win it, and then you have to live with the down years. Mm. Yeah, but they'll be back next year. They they've Probably. got massive amounts of cap room and, and uh, great defensive team that's going to be better with the COVID uh, opt outs now, uh, I will returning. I I can agree with you from the the sentiment of the Patriots are going to be good, but I will disagree with you on the basis that they have had a division that is beatable for twenty years. Yes, that's fair. And, and Miami and Buffalo are here to play football for a while, so it will be fun to see a competitive division. Not saying they can't end up on top rather soon, but congrats if you won last night. Yes. <laughs> um, also, I'm sorry if you lost to the miracle that was the Allen Diggs stack. That didn't seem possible. Um, we are we sharing this voicemail that yes. we have? Yes, we are. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, we do have. Uh, we do want to hear any good stories, bad beats, any of that stuff at the FF Ballers on Twitter. But we do have a voicemail about. Um, one particular uh, gentleman. Go ahead. Hey, Phil Ballers. Your former intern blew an 80-point lead tonight against Allen, Diggs, Bill's defense, and the Bill's kicker. At 4 o'clock this, this morning, he made a celebrating video of his victory. Was that too soon? Thanks for the call. Bonjour. Oh, man. So, Look, this is a hype. Uh, so baby Josh, our former intern, yeah. stayed up late. Burning the midnight oil so he can make a good taunt video, which, I mean, that's... I respect that. Yeah. I, I, Once you win... Uh, game, respect, game. Well, I mean, you got to... You're up 80. People ask me, like, when is when is it too soon to buy my, my Foot Clan title t-shirt? I'm like, was it bad, bad when Babe Ruth pointed that, that he was going to crush a home run? No, it made it even more awesome that he called his shot. So, I, I respect making the video. But, man, you <laughs> you look like a dummy, dummy, dumb drops right now. And it's great. Yes. Uh, unbelievable. You lost. You made a video that now exists oh, I hope of you pretending to win. It's reused all the time. That thing's got to be shared to your shame every every chance it can. Oh, let me, I mean, if I made that, I would hate seeing it every single time it's brought back to my attention. So I don't, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but in, in our uh, Slack channel for the League of Record, the person who was the number one seed, what shout out, Nick. Oh, I've noticed. Uh, he was the number one seed, and he was posting gifts nonstop. I'm number one. Number one. <laughs> number one, which is fantastic because now I don't even have to look for gifts. I just keep sharing his, his? posts. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> um, sometimes you're Babe Ruth, right. and it works out. Sometimes you're that Lakers player sometimes that, shoots, you're Casey at the that shoots the three and then turns oh, around and, oh, and throws the double what threes was his up. Name? I don't even remember. Oh, it was but such a good name, he too. He turns around, throws the threes up, and the ball does not go in the hoop. So uh, you can get your Foot Clan title shirt, shopballers.com. Swag out. We'll be doing it very soon. Swaggy P. I think his name was Swaggy P. Uh, yeah, you have a better memory than I do. It's Nick Young, Swaggy P. So it really was. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's a perfect name for. 
for that. Um, we have a big announcement. I think it's worthy uh, of oh yes of a what a Jared Goff. Oh, Jared Goff, yeah. Announcing the Megala Bowl winner. This is big time. Yeah. 8,000 plus players this year, one winner. One champion. And one player that will be in our official listener league next year. Mm -hmm. Congratulations to Baskin Robinson. Oh, fabulous name. AKA Joseph Mason 94, who won the Megala Bowl for 2020. And it was close. Uh, you shall not pass. <laughs> That's a good name. Also a good name. Yeah. Uh, Finish second in the Megala Bowl. The difference was just more than one point. So congratulations to everybody that participated, played. The playoffs were really fun, and uh, it was a huge success this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and congratulations to uh, Tyler McFadden, who took home the Listener League. He will be back. So we have two. Oh, man. We have two uh, players slotted in for the 2021 Listener League. Now, why didn't we win the Listener League? Because and Rodgers and Adams decided that week 15, they were going to do nothing. Oh, man. Yeah, as much as the Camara hurt people in week 15 compared to 16, Rodgers and Adams were. Yes, because if they had showed up week 15, yeah. I would have opened up another spot. Unbelievable. A can of whoop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did see one of our fine listeners get an absolute drubbing. Just it, the kind of, honestly, if I'm going to lose in a title game, I'd rather it be this way. Faced, you know, it was like Rogers, Adams, Diggs, Camara, oh. Gaskin. It was like <laughs> if you built the millionaire maker type of lineup. Unbelievable. So, uh, Twitter at the FF Baller, share your stories with us. We'll be sharing them over the course of the next few weeks. We'll share some good ones. Uh, if you have enjoyed this year worth of content, we encourage you head to Apple Podcast, subscribe. It's a year round show. Leave a review. It's free to do that, and we love them. They make us feel good. Oh, yeah, and we, we're not going anywhere. Uh, we'll be here next week with some footy awards. We'll have some Ask uh, Me Anything shows coming up. It'll be good times. All right. Um, unless I'm forgetting something, Brooks, I think we're going to talk news. News and notes from around the league. Dwayne Haskins hey. Hey. has no team. He's been waived. He'll be picked up. I mean, he'll. I don't think he'll go through waivers unclaimed as a backup, as a prospect on a rookie deal. I, I would imagine somebody a, claims That's him. a first-round pick, though. Yeah. I that's mean, a first-round contract. It's, it's, yeah. Do you think he goes through waivers? I mean, probably. I, I think he makes it through unclaimed. This is – this sucks, man. I – the a former first round pick waived after their i mean th this was his shot and he, the the team said we don't think we can trade you and ron rivera a very well respected head coach right. is the one that waived him so i think that those two things make it difficult now there's always the egomaniac GM or head coach that believes that they can fix all the problems and make a player good. So that would be your shot. Yeah. Ho hopefully Haskins gets Adam Gase some can get it done, out. right? <laughs> oh, for sure. Pick him up jets. What if, what if Adam Gase's powers is to make, um, like a bad player? Good. A really well, he bad may, player. Yeah, he makes everyone good as soon as they leave. Oh, that's true. So no Dwayne Haskins. Um, that dynasty pick not looking great for anybody that thought nope. they had a quarterback in Dwayne Haskins. Nope. Alex Smith was very close to suiting up last week. Um, he will suit up this week and play. Otherwise, it'll be uh, Taylor Heineke, yeah. right? Yes. Heineke? Heineke. Tyler? Taylor? Taylor hey, Heineke. Look, he's, look, he's, the, he's a backup. But T. It's Heineke. A... <laughs> T. Heine? T. Heine. <laughs> um, Washington plays Philadelphia, and they hold the inside track for the title. Um, if they win, they win the division. If they lose... Then the winner of the uh, Giants Cowboys. Giants Cowboys makes the playoffs. Did oh, you hear what man. we said? The Giants or the Cowboys? No, no, Jason. They not only do they make the the playoffs, they will host a playoff game. In I mean, congratulations! What 
well done. While on while in the AFC, you've got you know the Dolphins and Colts and some of these. Philadelphia teams. is eliminated though, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So we do so, have, and it is possible to be eliminated in the NFC East. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you did it, Philly. <laughs> oh man. All right, the uh, Washington football team star wide receiver Terry McLaurin high ankle sprain. Yeah, I would not expect him to play. Yeah, that's going to hurt the efforts out mm -hmm. there. Kyler Murray is – Cliff Kingsbury is hopeful he can play in Week 17. To me, that means he's playing in Week 17. Arizona is playing for a playoff berth against John Wolford, the backup quarterback for the Los Angeles Rams because Jared Goff had surgery to repair a broken and dislocated right-throwing thumb. So um, there you go. Yeah, and they will also be – the Rams will be without Daryl Henderson. Yeah. High Ooh. ankle sprain. Boy, it's been kind of a roulette. Yeah. Unless, unless Brown is there, and Brown is just always there. Well, yep. I, they, like, if you're in week 17, I mean, Malcolm Brown, yeah, he's, he's, he's shaping up to be the last man standing. Whenever you have enough injuries at running back where there's one guy left, oh, it's just so great they're, for fantasy. They're a strong play. All right, what else is going on? Brandon Ayuk, high ankle sprain as well. Christian McCaffrey, uh, Matt Rule says he would lean towards him not playing, you know, at this point, just don't play him. Yeah, wrap, wrap it up. Your season's done. Kevin Stefanski says uh, all the receivers will be activated from the COVID list after if they continue testing negative. So receivers will be helpful for Baker. Yeah, I mean, uh, without them, uh, <laughs> it wasn't. it didn't go well. No. Ronald Jones on track to come off the COVID list in week 17 against the Falcons. So he could be back and in your lineup if you play in week 17. Frank Gore won't play. Michael Pittman's in concussion protocol. Sammy Watkins suffered a calf injury, um, which fulfills his contractual requirement for three injuries this year. For Sammy? For Sammy. Yeah. Yeah, just collecting checks and pulling well, he's muscles. Gotta, he's got to get ready because this is when he shows up. Um, any other news, Brooks? Am I forgetting anything? Any other high ankle sprains from either producer? Have either of you guys done anything dangerous lately? I'd never do anything dangerous. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Can I, that mm, kind of reminds me of a story. Oh, there's a Brooks story? Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I want to hear this Brooks story. I was Brooks the one story. time Brooks tried to do something dangerous. Do you know where I'm going, Brooks? I don't. Did he wear like uh, fingerless leather gloves? No, no, it was just... Trying to be a bad boy? Brooks moved here to, to become our producer. Oh, now I know. Now... <laughs> <laughs> um, we're we're going to talk about basketball. Oh, yeah. this was dangerous. That's me, yeah, me getting dangerous. I mean, that was probably the most dangerous thing you've done in a while, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we had been playing some basketball in the mornings, and we, you know, we... You know, Brooks just moving out here, you know, need some friends, and wanted to... Kind well, of get him integrated. Yeah, we invite him out. I mean, yeah. hey, you want to come along? Sure. He said, yeah. Absolutely. And Mike was there too, right? So we, I were, was. we were doing some two on two one time. And then Brooks retired. And he <laughs> retired, I wouldn't say on top. <laughs> um, he retired. Look, Brooks is a man who, due to his massive amount of wealth, right. he stays inside, does not have what you would say a tan. But <laughs> that day at the end of basketball was like he was hit with chalk pillows over and over <laughs> and over because he he made dracula look like he had a look, some all I, blood had drained you know from what his though body. now this is reminding me of the fact that brooks actually did you did have he, one more dangerous moment in your life and oh and that was the famous beach race where you beat our other producer who was very slow that was actually the beginning of his wealth yeah that's right he, he invested that all that anyway i i need to move on now but uh we're gonna get into some waivers but before we do that i want to thank today's sponsor head and shoulders look you know this when you are confident you do not settle for anything less than 100 are you the kind of person who takes everything up to 100 you want to take your hair game up to 100 well head and shoulders gives you up to 100 percent dandruff protection that means if you use it regularly you can prevent up to 100 percent of visible flakes get that hair that looks 100 percent Amazing. Jason, yo, what do you take up to 100? <sighs> Whatever I can, my man. How's that snack count? S my snack count is 100. How's that championship count? Oh, it's 100. Andy, what do you take up to 100? 
everything, Mike. Your rocking chair game? Yeah, my rocking chair game, Your Mike. Your caramel shoes? Yeah, yeah, my reading books game, Mike. Oh, you got the book game uh, up? I don't know. <laughs> Right. Well, we all took our championship game up to 100 this week or, or this year. We hope you did as well. And if you want to take that hair up to 100, speaking of that, our taking it up to 100 uh, uh, segment with head and shoulders. It's about to take a step up. We are tied. Andy and I yeah. are tied heading into the final week where there is apparently. A I really care now. There is some type of trophy. Look, our championships of the regular season, they are one. And now we are trying to best each other. And the take it up to 100 I want competition. That so uh, stick tuned or uh, stay tuned. Thursday we will have our picks. Oh man! Yeah. Oh man! It's yeah, it's gonna be fun this week. Take your hair up to 100 with Head and Shoulders available online at Walmart. And Foot Clan, let's make every moment an opportunity to look your best with Indochino. Perfectly fitted, custom clothes are more affordable than you might think. If you want a nice pair of chinos that fit perfectly not not they, they they fit at the waist they fit everywhere perfectly it looks amazing mm -hmm. you want a suit and you want it to be custom fit and not i mean real tailored suits that aren't thousands of dollars that look phenomenal mike i know you just went I did. and got measured i went i went into the shop and i was like whoa you know i haven't left my house in a really long time so this is this is speaking of dangerous yeah but stay safe mask up go there the uh, the the lady Taylor, the, yeah. the tailor who working there she was masked up everything felt incredibly safe the they were they made sure to time things out so that I'm the one who's there getting the attention and it was fantastic I cannot wait to get my suit yeah it's it's gonna be amazing you could customize everything the fabric the lining the lapel shape best part is Indochino suits start at just 299 with all the customizations included. Book your virtual appointment and shop online at Indochino.com. And right now, you'll get $30 off any purchase of $3.99 or more when you enter the code FOOTBALLERS at checkout. That's $30 off a purchase of $3.99 or more at Indochino.com. Promo code is FOOTBALLERS. Put me in, coach. There is actually one other competition that's going through Week 17 here in the studio mm -hmm. amongst oh. all of the em employees. And uh, Al Borland is actually winning it right now. I thought we were tied. We were until you picked last night wrong. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, fitting that Josh Allen narrative. Just perfect. <laughs> um, yeah, Al Borland is one pick ahead of me right now on the year-long uh, against the spread. So I wonder what that makes our actual, like, against the spread record. You should look that up. That'd be interesting. Pretty good. Um, so I hope you lose because I don't want to pay you money. All right. Uh, put me in coach waiver time week 17 waiver time. Oh boy. Yeah. You guys ready for this? Oh yeah. Yeah. Take your Pepto. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about wide receivers. Where are you looking in week 17? If you need a spot start at wide receiver, obviously the storyline for week 17 is there are teams that are going to rest players. There are also teams that are in a position that they may feel comfortable in. Um, where they may players play players for half a game, three quarters of a game, and then rest them. So the variables are plenty. Mm -hmm. So where are you looking? I am personally looking, if I need a wide receiver, I'm looking at a game that is the potential of a win and get in in a division match for a wide receiver who has been a, a wide receiver one over the last month, surprisingly. It's Michael Gallup. I know it's hard because... You've got a backup quarterback, and he could be the three on any given week. It could be he is the third most talented wide receiver there, but that doesn't take his actual talent away. And you say, okay, well, the New York Giants—they're they're pretty good at defense. They're you know they've they've locked people down, but you know he had a he had a wide receiver one uh, against Baltimore uh, a month ago. He played against San Francisco, got a touchdown this last week. Obviously, a monster game. I I don't think Michael Gallup is someone that you have to pick up, have to start. But if you're out there and you're in week 17 and you, you've you lost an important piece um, and you're saying, I need someone that I could pick up and have a big game, I think Gallup provides a, a, a ceiling type of play. Any one of those, really. C.D. Lamb, I would very much include as well if he's available. He's probably more rostered than Michael Gallup, though, and Gallup's actually been better over the last month. Dallas, uh, what do they need? They need to win. They need to win, and they, and they need, need Washington, Washington to, to lose. lose. Yeah, but and, Washington is the 
Sunday night game, if I'm remembering correctly. So Dallas won't know heading into their matchup. Perfect. They, they have so, to win. So the division winner is going to end up at seven and nine. Unless I don't well, think that there's a way for that. What's Washington? Is it I guess Washington if Philly beats if nine? Philly beats Washington, no, uh, Washington six and nine. Oh. If Philly beats them, yeah, then you're right. And then Dallas loses to the Giants, so then, then it will be a six and ten division winner. Impressive. What? And six and ten really does seem much worse than seven and nine. Yeah. Well, because it is. And it's <laughs> really embarrassing because there's going to be a ten and six team that misses the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, this is there any doubt that that team's just going to go lose in the first round? None whatsoever. Okay. Um, so I, you know, one of the things to think about there though is that in the NFC East, you do have teams playing for something. <clears throat> Sterling Shepard uh, last week had twelve targets, went nine for seventy-seven and a touchdown. Golden Tate wasn't playing it seemed like every target going Darius Shepard's way la uh, landed 10 feet away from him so the shorter yardage uh higher Daniel Jones completion percentage type right. of throws worked out for Sterling Shepard yeah I, I agree he's another great option with a better matchup in the same game out of those two players would you rather have Shepard than Gallup um no no I will actually say Gallup I'd rather go with better quarterback a better quarterback that has shown me some let's say pizzazz over the last few weeks where jones has frightened me um yeah i want, I want to talk like i mean this is the waiver show for week 17 so hopefully you aren't going after these guys but we know that things happen uh these are all kind of higher risk players but zach pascal this this rascal stealing all of our ty hilton points for the Indianapolis Colts the last couple of weeks. He has seen six targets in each. He has scored in each of those games, and he's taken on the Jacksonville Jaguars, and the Colts need to win. So they're, they're going to be playing to win, and and uh, if you're watching the game, Hilton is a part-time player. I mean, he's still important to their offense, but Pascal is, the, is on the field far more than T.Y. Hilton at this point. So I, I think that he is interesting. Uh Kiki QT for the Texans is another option. Uh, wasn't a great week, but five for fifty-four had a fumble. I I agree. I think I think uh, people will be too quick to say, "Oh, Kiki QT didn't get it done." I'm done with him. But the matchup should be good. Um, and f five for fifty-four. His fantasy finish was horrific because of the fumble. Five for fifty-four is a good bad game. If that sure. like that was a bad game for fantasy, but that's a good version of that where it's not just no targets and disappeared completely. Yeah, and you bring up all the time, all wide receivers are inconsistent. If if the best wide receivers have down games, it would be quite foolish to look at these fringe streaming wide receiver options and then throw them away after one bad game. That's just what's going to happen. Otherwise, they're not a fringe waiver show pickup. They are an every week auto start. So QT is somebody that you know the role is defined and they're not being benched. They didn't win the division they're not the one seed and, and where you know Tennessee has something to play for on the other side of the ball and if you did you guys see JJ Watts post game press oh conference? I sure did oh boy let me just say this the Texans have something to play for it's JJ. called JJ Watt yeah because he put that team on blast I mean he oh that he, should be played I'm, for every high school football team for the rest of of he gave a little history. hoorah. He gave a little beatdown of whatever teammates aren't doing their job, and so I think uh, people are going to come and do their job. So no, I, I, it's I worth do a like listen. Actually, it's pretty. It was the leader stuff. Yeah, I I would put uh, Nelson Aguilar above Kiki. My concern with Kiki is Nelson's at the top. I think. Yeah, it, my concern with Kiki is Deshaun Watson related. I know he's yeah. I know he's going to play or he says he's going to, you know, give it a go. Th there's no guarantee that Deshaun Watson finishes that game and this is you are picking these guys up to put into your lineup for one week. Yeah, that's that that's rough. I completely did forget about I you got to no, monitor I heard, practice. I heard what Mike said. He said Jordan Akins. That's what he <laughs> <laughs> You got to monitor practice with Watson cuz that that was concerning yeah Aguilar would be in that um more rostered than the other names we brought up but maybe not and uh he's had some like he's a perfect championship shot 
because Nelson Aguilar has had you know a number of games where he's a top ten receiver. Mm-hmm. I don't think we're going to get top ten from QT. So, last uh, name I would throw out would be Manny Sanders. Again, more more rostered out there, but uh, the Saints are playing for seeding. Uh, the matchup is great against Carolina. He's he's been pretty solid. Had eighty plus yards this last week. Michael Thomas obviously out. Um, and Kamara can't get all the touchdowns forever. That's what you think. No, that's actually factually correct because Taysom Hill wouldn't need to take some of them. <laughs> yeah, you got to let Taysom score. All right, let's look at some main waiver wire picks at the running back position. Darrell Williams, A.J. Dillon, both very, very interesting, especially Darrell Williams if they slot him behind Lev Bell in the depth chart. It means that Williams could see a lot of play in the final week. Not a guarantee. You know, you probably have – uh, if Lev's not active or something of that nature, you'd probably see Darwin active. Yeah, it, the matchup is what makes it interesting against the Chargers. I mean, they're, the Chargers' defense is, is not good. So while you're not likely going to have Patrick Mahomes helming the, the Kansas City offense, or at least at least not the full game, you will not have Patrick Mahomes. I don't know if he's going to play a quarter, two quarters, one drive. But Darrell Williams is interesting. A.J. Dillon... They, they, they're they're talking about him more now. The, the the whispers are starting to pour out for AJ Dillon. Yes, I feel like this year you've gotten to really enjoy fantasy football when it comes to your kind of darlings in the in the over the course of the year. Like Antonio Gibson, mm-hmm. right. you got flex weeks with Gibson, Chase Claypool. Even though he's not been great lately, you got flex weeks with Claypool. And then here's A.J. Dillon. Hey, week 16, yeah. I'm here. My quads are here, too. Coming to save the show. It's just interesting. It's been a good year for you, Mike. <laughs> I, uh, look, it's it's crazy because all these guys are on my dynasty team, so right, the future's put... looking a little brighter. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, Dillon, the, the matchup against Chicago, but with Green Bay, uh, we, we're not really sure what they're going to do to handle their team. But A.J. Dillon and I would expect to see more work than Aaron Jones. Yeah, I, I think he's going to get a lot of volume. I, I would I would be picking up Dillon either as keep away or possibly even to play. A.J. Dillon is going to be great this week. I, I, I watched Dari Agumbawale run, have some big plays against this Chicago's defense. Um, obviously, Chicago's playing for something. but And, and I'll be honest, the Daryl Williams uh, pick, that scares me. Sure. Because you – he don't he could dominate that game for sure. sure but he could also be rested he could he could be determined that that's the guy they need for the playoffs if Clyde Edwards Alaire's not coming along and Love Bell looks like he's looked so he's just he is very very scary to me okay so do you go Daryl Williams or would you go Gus Edwards the, the Ravens are playing for something and they're taking on the Cincinnati Bengals would you rather play Gus Edwards I'd play I Gus over Daryl yeah, that's the, I, I view them the same. I, okay, let me throw a name out there that I play over both of them that I want to know if you two think is crazy, just crazy. But it's Malcolm Brown, the aforementioned Malcolm Brown. If I mean, I think right now it's a little too early in the week to know definitively, but right now it looks like there won't be Daryl Henderson, there won't be Cam Akers. If those two backs are gone and you've got a one-man show, I mean, obviously – uh, it's it's a divisional matchup. It's a backup quarterback. Yeah, There's a it lot, and, it, me. and it's a third string running back. So I totally understand that. But I also think if, if so, the, like you know, like a third string quarterback, a backup running back against the Arizona Cardinals, like right, last they could week. Never, just like last week, they could never have a good game. Jeff Wilson, never. Um, yeah, no, I I would play Malcolm Brown over those other two guys because of the known volume. I would play – Malcolm Brown feels like an Edo Smith play this week. I'd play Gus Edwards for bigger play potential, but I get it. it. It's a compelling argument. If you know you have all the work in the backfield, it's tough to argue with that as a potential start over Daryl Williams, which is completely speculative right now. Like Later in the week, we may have a clearer picture of what Kansas City is even going to do. It is wild, the amount of running backs <laughs> who are looking at huge workloads this week. Uh, I mean, because Daria Gumbawale – he, he looked good. He looked pretty good for the Jacksonville Jaguars. He's taken on the Indianapolis Colts. Should see a lot of work again. The New York Jets, LaMichael Pirine, the, the fourth-round rookie for New York. Frank Gore is not going to play, and the team had – before Pirine went on the injured reserve, Adam Gase had already started to put his 
you know, confidence in that we're going to get P. Ryan more involved. Uh, I think that P. Ryan can handle the, the workload type of a situation. Taking on the Patriots, get to beat up on a divisional rival. Adam Gase has – he's got to play for pride at least. So mm -hmm. P. Ryan's going to see a lot of touches. Or, or you could play P. Ryan. Samaj A. P. Ryan. <laughs> um, Impressive game last week. Yeah, he had a great game uh, against – I mean, granted, it was Houston. Houston. And that is – a great matchup, but he he looked great. Uh, 13 carries, two touchdowns, 95 rushing yards. The pain bot, which ironically, Andy, to your point, that was one of Mike's – like Mike was oh, all yeah. in on yeah. Samaj P. Ryan. He believed in it the talent. It just took a couple years. It just took a couple years, a couple <laughs> injuries. Great matchup. Great matchup, <laughs> and here He's, we are. Samaj P. Ryan, you know what they say. He's the everything that Rodney Anderson was going to be. Oh, man, Rodney would have been so good <laughs> last week. By the way, uh, Al Borland did run – of course he did the math because he's winning in the picks, but uh, you want to know what the percentage was? Oh, I saw, and I love it. 55! 55% against the spread. Not bad. Yeah. Um, Sony Michelle was, oh man. I mean, there was no, uh, Damien Harris last night. Yeah. He was, Damien Harris was questionable going into the game. So he could be active in week 17. Uh, and Keyshawn, it, and Keyshawn is, Vaughn is one that I'm not looking at though, because that game was so out of hand. He got all that work because of the game being out of hand. And they almost all came in the second half and you're going to get Ronald Jones back this week and it should be more competitive in division against Atlanta. I I believe that Keyshawn Vaughn could do something, but with the amount of options who are more secured in their volume, I would go with them before I start looking at Vaughn. I feel like there's a chance Vaughn could have work or have no carries at all in this yes, game. Yes, yes. So. All right, tight end options. Where are you looking? Big Irv keeps flashing. Six for 53 and two. Big Irv was a, a big thorn in my butt cheeks this weekend as he kept stealing all of Dalvin Cook's touchdowns. Now... You won the title, though, right? I did. Okay. But look. We're, doesn't, uh, doesn't it we're, feel great afterwards when you're like, oh, man, I should have played it? Uh, I won anyway. Yeah, but as a fantasy player, I will still remember week, week 16, and I will be angry with Zimmer forever. Austin Hooper had 15 targets last week. Plays Pittsburgh this week. How do you have 15 targets? He caught and, almost half and, of them. And the game seven for 71. Come yeah. on, Hooper. Yeah, it was it – was, it was really He's not that athletic. I mean, that's the the truth of Austin Hooper. He is pedestrian athleticism. Well, I need more athleticism in his hands. Yeah, I was going to say it wasn't the athleticism that really bit him last week. There were just so many catchable balls that he didn't got another he didn't, baby hands. Yeah, he, he he just didn't bring it in. It was so ironic as a start of the week as a smash play. He was at, he was good. Yeah. Like 7 for 71 at tight end. He was good. You were happy. You picked him up happy you played him. But also on the field, he was terrible. He also did almost all that work on the first drive. Yeah. And you were like, oh, this is going to be a huge game. Like, be the number one he'll probably get 15 targets today. <laughs> and then he did. And then it didn't matter much. And Jimmy Grandpa keeps getting it done in the end zone. Um, hard to argue with four for 69 and two touchdowns. He is a legitimate play uh, as much as Gronkowski is. Yeah, it was a very nice game. He's the tight end 10 on the season. And he has, I mean, he missed multiple games with injury, right? Uh, is that it's so, just that's such a tough play where I mean, since the bye week, he's on the field for like forty five percent of the snaps. If they're not in that uh, sweet spot where they're within the fifteen yard line, and then they looked him in the end zone, it gets trickier. So uh, it's tight end. Yeah. So the, I'd, the I'd, grandpa is a fun player to be able to dunk on your opponent with. That's true. I would go with uh, – I Would Would still, you play Hooper over I'd him? I'd still go with Hooper over – Would you too, Jason? Guys. Yeah, I would I – would, would you play Big Irv over them? I would play Big Irv over them. Uh, there's some other matchups this week that are really good. Jared Cook, um, I, I don't know that he's on waivers, but these are – you know, those are the guys that you have on the roster that you're saying, I've got Jared Cook – He's maybe been disappointing. Do I look to Big Irv? Do I look to Jimmy Grandpa? I would continue rolling with uh, with Q. Where do you find value at defense uh, this week? Man, that's 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 tougher. Uh, the, Cardinals I, playing a backup quarterback, but Sean McVay is Sean McVay has just had Cliff Kingsbury's number in the. It's, it's, it also feels like the Rams' defense could give a short field to Arizona. 
Yeah, I or I, to uh to their offense. Right. Um, I don't love that one. I want to play against the Lions. Um, th that would be the Vikings defense. A good, obviously, defensive-minded head coach. The Vikings defense hasn't been great to play, but I would be willing to to play. We don't have any update on Stafford. Do no, we? not yet. I don't think he's going to play. This I, I don't either. I mean, why bring him back for a last week that means nothing when you don't even have a head coach? Like, just let the guy heal up, in which case I would play I'd play the Jets defense against the Lions. David Blau going to oh, get another start. Oh, David Blau. He looked better than Chase Daniel when uh, they, when uh, they brought him uh, in for the fourth uh, quarter. Uh. If the Texans don't have Deshaun Watson – um, if for some reason he isn't able to give it a go, then the Titans' defense, which also is bad, would be good. Like I, I want a, I want to play against backup quarterbacks. And who are you taking in the Cowboys versus the Giants game? Who like are to you, win? Who are you picking to win? The Cowboys. Yeah. So the Cowboys that's who defense. I'm taking. So the Cowboys' defense is in play for me. I mean, uh, the Giants are just as much in play as the Cowboys are. But I'm going to go with the, the team I believe will win. So I would take the Cowboys against uh, Daniel Jones. I agree with that. You you realize Matthew Stafford has been hurt three consecutive end of year. Yeah, he played through it two years ago, but it was the back injury for three games, and then he missed last year's end of season. And he's going to miss this year's end of season too. Yep. So injuries are piling up. Yeah. Full stream ahead. All right, man, uh, I'm going to be honest with you. It was real tough after I saw you guys had your streaming picks in there to find somebody, so I super cheated on this one. Um, but who are your streams of the week? Uh, my stream of the week is Kirk Cousins. I, I I absolutely love him. I would be playing him over most options. Uh, you know, let's say you have Pat Mahomes, and you've got, you know, the decision to make, like, if they if he's active, if Pat Mahomes is active, I don't know that you can play him because what what's no. he going to play? Is he going to play uh, half a quarter, a drive? I it's just one of those. Or let's say he's inactive and you need someone to pivot to. Kirk Cousins against Detroit is a smash matchup. Now it's a smash matchup for Dalvin. Dalvin, absolutely. But the the Lions have done such a good job of letting all positions win. Um, it, the last five weeks. There has only been one game where they haven't had a top three quarterback performance. Four of the last five weeks is top three. We're not talking like, oh, a top 12. We're talking monster, massive performances. It only took Brady one half. So Kirk Cousins, he's he's my streamer, and, and I, I would definitely start him in a championship. Yeah, game. literally the only – I think the only risk is, is Dalvin goes crazy early on, and it's – you I mean, get Detroit's Drew Brees of last week where he exactly. threw for 300 yards, zero touchdowns because Alvin Kamara got six. I think they'll split it up. And honestly, maybe one of those Dalvin Cook touchdowns is a, is a screen. Yeah, it's, it, you know, like you said, um, fantasy point equality is big for Detroit. They let every position mm -hmm. uh, reach their goals. Yeah, I think Adam Thielen, Justin Jefferson, those guys are going to get it done. All right, Mike. I'm going with Phillip Rivers. Oh, P. Rivers one, for week 17. One last dip. Oh, no. <laughs> Take it on the Jacksonville. I didn't know you had that set up. Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, the Jags have been the fourth best matchup over the last month, and that includes a game against the Tennessee Titans. So the when you look at the at fourth, it should probably be better, except Derrick Henry, the Yeti, uh, held down what Tannehill could possibly do in that matchup. So I think I, I like Kirk Cousins a lot. I think I like him more than Phillip Rivers, but both are in play. And uh, if Ryan Tannehill's available – Please play him against the Texans. The Texans defense and the Detroit defense, they huddle up midweek and they say, hey, no, you give up more points. No, you give up more points. They both are, are, are terrible. And you can look what you can look for is if you happen to be in championship week, I don't know if someone has Ryan Tannehill, but it, Ryan Tannehill could be hate dropped uh, heading, mm -hmm. heading after the waiver period because of what he did in week 16. Yeah, and they need to win to, uh, to clinch the number four seed in the division. So And, and to kind of get some of the stink of last week off uh, on the offensive side of the football. So I think Tannehill against the Texans is an obvious smash play. Let's do a little week 17 mailbag. Mailbag. Bang, oh, bang. Ooh. oh, this will be fun. Robert Woods question from Zach in Lakefield, Ontario. My finals are in week 17. 
With Goff being out, what oh, man. do I do about Robert Woods? Do I start him or look for another option in my flex position? Yeah, Woods and Woods and Cup are going to be really dicey plays. Um, I, one of the things I like about Woods with the absence of uh, Daryl Henderson, Cam Akers, and a backup quarterback is I, I do expect them to manufacture some. I mean, Woods is I'm often, just playing them both. Woods has been used in the running game. Um, and he's, you know, the, the, the plays are usually designed a little bit more for him. Would you play both of them over any of the waiver wire pickups, the, the Aguilar, the Gallup, the, yeah, I, well, maybe not Aguilar. That one would be the toughest one. Cause I don't know if you're going to get the, you're not going to get a boom game, but I feel, I feel like Arizona will provide enough for Robert Woods and Cooper cup and Arizona has the chance to put up points and force him to throw the football. So I'm okay with them. They're both okay. close to the line of scrimmage, PPR type of options. Beathard had three passing touchdowns against Arizona. Yeah, that's that's definitely fair. <laughs> All right, uh, here's a question from Stone in Arkansas. I have Devin Singletary and Zach Moss. Okay. I'm sorry. In a league with five <laughs> keepers. Moss is passing uh, the eye test for me at the end of the season. Singletary hasn't looked that good all year. Who will be more valuable in 2021 and beyond? It's more likely to be Zach Moss. It so, is more likely to be Zach Moss because he's more likely to score touchdowns, but th this is this is a full-on running back by committee. I can't imagine that the with the success that they've had, they're going to say, okay, Zach Moss, you're now the 65% snap guy, and we're going to get you on the field as much as we can. It's, yeah. it's going to be both players. He's not a he's not a keeper to me. In a five-keeper league, I'm looking to uh, a different option, someone that, that you can uh, hope develops as a wide receiver for the future because what we saw this year is what I expect to get next year, barring injury to either one of them, which is irrelevance. It's, uh, uh, they're a player – that if you were to draft, you can't really play without an injury to the other party. So I I would prefer to look elsewhere. But if I had to pick one of these two, it would be Moss because he's you know more involved near the goal line and in the passing work. Yeah, the team seems to have trusted him early. You're exactly right. The only way a running back has value in Buffalo with what Josh Allen does, the frequency of passing and him running himself, is to have the job to himself. I mean, that's that's what it would be. And that's not the situation. And both guys are under contract, and they're cheap, right. and they're on their rookie deal. So th this is this is I don't expect them to bring someone in, um, but they're both going to be there next year. All right, here's a um, question from Carry On My Young Way Coo over on JoinTheFoot.com. For last place punishments, do you guys go by regular season standings or the playoffs? Oh, definitely regular season standings. I mean, for those teams that don't make the playoffs and like by a wide margin the last place teams what they do in the playoffs is probably nothing they've probably checked out and aren't participating aren't doing waivers um so yeah it's it's certainly whoever sucked in the regular season all right that'll do it we want to thank pristine auction a t higgins signed mini helmet yesterday 71 dollars t higgins bright future in the nfl and you can get hundreds of daily sports or access to hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions over at Pristine Auction. You can get hundreds of them as well. You can win hundreds. Yeah, I mean, of you them. could win hundreds. You Brooks could, could at least. Brooks could win thousands, yeah. to be fair. <laughs> PristineAuction.com. Use the code BALLERS and you'll get a $10 credit towards your first purchase. Definitely check them out. It has been a fun season partnering with Pristine. And uh, hopefully, you saw the giveaway video that we put up as well yeah it was great uh one thing i want to clarify before we leave because i know there's been confusion about this in the past uh if you're if you're getting uh a championship you want the free ring at fantasy champs you need to add it to your cart you need to add mm. the ch you pick whichever championship ring you want add it to the cart along with the trophy and then use the promo code free ring and that will it is if you just Smart. buy a trophy and use free ring as the coupon you save no money and get no ring so you got to add it to the cart. That way you pick out what you want. You pick out what you want. Promo code free ring. You get $60 off. All right. Perfect. That'll do it for today's show. Congratulations to so many. Not everybody won. I know that. But hopefully you had a very, very fun year. And especially congrats to the winners. And uh, Like us! We'll talk tomorrow. Goodbye.
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.